Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Another day, another 50 cents. <laughs> so, I've been thinking about redesigning the store a little bit. And, sorry, I'm just cleaning up as I go around. Last night was Commander Night, and we had about 40 people here. So, it gets a little messy. Um, been thinking about redesigning the store a little bit. Uh, it's, it's got me to the point where I am at now. But it's not going to get me much further. So I've been thinking about redesigning it a little bit. And let me know what you think. What I'm because I'm gonna show you. I got a vision. Alright, so this is how it looks when you walk in. So when I first opened I had these like shitty tables here, like uh you know, the foldable ones, the crap ones that, like, all game stores have. But they're shitty, and I don't like them. So I upgraded those. Um, so what we're going to do... All right, don't mind the stain. I'm getting carpet cleaner coming on next Monday. Uh, yeah, so these are the tables I had originally. I brought these out because we fill up, and then I have to bring out extra tables. So let me give you a quick, like, little design... like design tour of the of the whole store back here is just play area so what my plan is and back there is just storage uh remove this wall gone um after that what the plan is is this is no longer going to be retail space so the retail space is going to go up here so we're going to do all slat wall from ceiling to floor, ceiling to floor, all the way down the whole thing. Uh, then what we're going to do is move all the display cases. We're going to work order. We have another display case on order that we're going to do have one for Pokemon, one for Magic, one for Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so Retail space is going to be over here, and then literally the rest of the store is just going to be play space. So the retail space would probably end uh, right around here because we're going to like close off the the area with another display case, so it's not going to come out further than it is over here. And uh, the cash wrap might go here, so TV will get relocated, everything like that, to the back. So, I believe that doing that would, like, probably I'll be able to squeeze in. Because at that point, I can get another one, two, three tables. So, I could do three tables like that and three tables like that. So, I can get six tables just in this space alone. Like, here and here. Um, instead of just the three tables, because the front door... I can't block the front door with another three sets of tables. Um, yeah, when I first opened, believe me, I was just piecing crap together. I didn't, I didn't really do a huge plan. I was just like, open the door, let's sell some cards. So removing this wall, I'll lose some retail space right here, but I'll gain a crap ton up there. And then pretty much the same deal over here. Uh, I might like reorganize the tables here so we might be able to put one so one two three five maybe maybe 12 tables so so 12 not 12 tables is it yeah tw one two three six yeah 12 tables wow that that would be a lot yeah so currently we have seven tables so it's like almost doubling capacity and this store can technically, uh, you know, before Fire Marshal and Code, I think it was 64 people, and they're still doing construction. <laughs> so I think that would be a great use of money, even though, you know, technically we don't have any. <laughs> but, you know, according to some people on, you know, Reddit and stuff... My trust fund will take care of it. <laughs> and then, like, over here, I don't think it's going to change much. 
uh, I'm going to just lose some like wall space with this, like the cool pictures and the posters that Wizards of the Coast send. But that's, you know, I don't care. It's whatever. Because to get more retail space would be like way better than having some, you know, posters up. Even though the posters are cool, it's not cool enough <laughs> to uh, leave and lose retail space. Also, getting rid of all the Funkos because they never sell. If you want to start a game store, uh, Funkos don't. They ju I mean, they just sit here. Like, sit. I'll sell maybe one a month. And they're just not... They're not good. They're not a good item. Magic is currently going through their Funko phase. Because uh, they just literally put... It's like the universe is beyond. Everything's just going to be on a Magic card soon. <laughs> so, Magic is currently going through their Funko phase. Redesign the store. Let me know what you think about that. Because I think having the retail space up front and a lot of play space in the back would be really good. Not only that, I mean, the one complaint I always get is the sun comes directly in here and like just blinds everyone so it would get rid of that this you know would get all moved whatever this is easy um i did order something new to display play mats it's a uh like a clothes rack from uh ikea and i'm probably going to relocate that well for now like right here so what we're going to do is we're going to like take all of the playmats out of the boxes and just display them on clothes hangers. Uh, I think people like being able to see the art on the playmat instead of on a little tiny, tiny box on the box would be way better than that. And would probably sell more playmats in the long run. Yeah, so let me know what you think about that. I think it's going to really uh, change the whole vibe of the store. For a good thing. I mean, the vibe of the store is very casual, so... Um, not, I don't mean, like, change it, like... Turn it into a uh, try-hard atmosphere where people are cutthroat and killing each other playing cards. I just think the, the feng shui would be a little different. So... Pre-release for Wilds of Eldraine. Uh, really good. Sales. Insane. Uh, sold out of collector boxes on the Patreon. I had to emergency call a distributor and get more. So that's good. The set looks really good. The art and the vibe, it's like, in my opinion, feels similar to Kamigawa and stuff like that with like all the art. So people love that stuff. Um, I have brand new people signing up for pre-release that never been to this store before. I've never seen their names. They have brand new accounts, which is awesome. Also, <clears throat> the weird thing about Magic, pre-release, it's like packed here. Completely packed. Like 30, 34 people. Now, translate that to a draft on a Friday. Lucky to get eight. Like, modern on Saturdays, sometimes it doesn't even fire. We're lucky to get six. But Yu-Gi-Oh! 20 plus people we have here on Thursdays. Our, our, you know, we're an OTS store as well. We do Yu-Gi-Oh! every Thursday night at 7. We get like 20 people. Our Pokemon League on Sunday, 20 people plus. Um, thriving. Growing. It's been great. Magic... No one plays constructed, like, regular, old, 60-card magic anymore. Standard? <sighs> Don't even get me started. You can't... I can't get a single person. If people come here and they're, like... They buy a single, and I'm like, wait, that's, like, a standard card. I was like, do you, I'm like, do you play standard? They're like, yeah. I'm like, where? They're like, oh, I just play at home with, my, you know, my friends. No one... Like, standard does not happen here. Anywhere, really. I, I, I mean, if you're, if you're a store, 
I would love to know from you if standard fires. Because it does not here. Only thing to get, like, people to play 60-card formats. Um, could be regional. Could be the area. But you almost, for Magic, you almost have to, like, give people 10 times the value that they paid to enter the tournament. Like, for them to feel like it's, it's so weird. I don't know what it is. But it's only Magic. Um... I know a lot of stores, like, if you pay to get in, like, they do, like, 10 to $15 a win in store credit. And in my mind, I'm like, that just doesn't make sense mathematically. Because someone can just come in a few pre-releases and win and then just take, like, one of your best reserve list cards from your case. It's like, you know, and that stuff doesn't come in very often. Sure, we have a higher profit margin on those things, but, like, it just doesn't make sense when they pay 30, well, let's say 25 to $35 for a pre-release, and, you know, your top half of the people that won it are getting almost their exact value back in store credit. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. Um, it just doesn't to me. I, I've never wanted to do anything like that, I, I and I won't. Um, because, like I said, nine times out of ten, that store credit is going to go towards, like, a really expensive single that you have in your case that doesn't come in very often, especially if you're relying on walk-in people trading in stuff. Now, Pokemon, on the other hand, and Yu-Gi-Oh!, they're just happy to play. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It's very weird. I don't know what it is, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Pack per win, extremely happy. You know, ha happy to play. The OTS packs they love. Um, we're able to put in, like, orders for OTS packs, which is great. Like, you can just order them when you run out. And, which is great because it, like, incentivizes you to give more to your players. Magic, they give you promo packs, but they give you a limited amount, and you really can't... At least, I don't know. You can't reorder them. Like, I don't know, unless I'm missing something. Uh, with Pokemon, they give, you know, the, the League packs, which are great. You know, everyone that comes to a tournament gets a League pack. Which is, you know, something that the players do look forward to. Uh, also, you know, they get three packs when they enter, and all that other stuff, and... You know, it's kind of like almost break even for those those people that come in. They're like, ah, whatever, it's three packs. It's it's good. It, it, it feels good to, like, kind of break even. But with Magic, it's like if you don't, like, really give out a bunch of crap, people, not many people come to a standard event. I'm not saying a pre-release. Pre-release is a different story. To, like, a regular modern or whatever. It's like you... You have to go all out to get people to come, which is disheartening because when I was growing up, F&Ms were always standard and were always packed. Like, packed, packed. People playing, like, standing up. It was crazy. And it's just, I've, it's not a thing. It's not a thing anymore. But Commander Knight, like I said, you seen the beginning of the video. I had to put out extra tables. We have 40 people here. But free event, casual. That's how the game is enjoyed now. Very casually at a kitchen table. And we're slowly seeing that, like, kind of muscle its way into the market with the way things are being done. And it kind of makes me not want to hold a lot of magic events because it's nine times out of ten not worth it. Pre-releases will always be worth it. But, like, doing modern and standard and, you know, Pioneer or, or it's just for eight people, it's just, I'd rather do another Yu-Gi-Oh! night or a Pokemon night or a Lorcana night, like, and get 20, 30 people. They have a problem and they need to address it. Now, this could be locally just to my store but I don't think it is. 
please let me know if you run a standard event and you have a store. <laughs> I would love to know. But I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.